Hello everyone and welcome back to Vyatka. Last time we unified Russia under a new democratic Russian empire and now it's time that we go about liberating Europe and we are presented with the perfect divine opportunity to do so as Speer's German order in Europe is falling apart. Moscow happens to be temporarily independent from Germany and led by Ferdinand so I think if we did not take advantage of this opportunity opportunity, we would be mad. So we're going to send all the infantry and all the motorized to the border to prepare for this final conflict. Or maybe one of several final conflicts as we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> all the divisions running across the Trans-Siberian Railway, they'll be there very momentarily. And here we are, we've integrated everything out here. So that means we're at our best. If we keep waiting, they'll probably keep getting stronger and maybe reunite with Germany or get conquered by Germany instead. It's now or never. I don't know how powerful they are, but I doubt they're as powerful as all of this stuff. And we'll finally get to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Or maybe not St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is actually still a puppet of Germany, so that might be kind of difficult. And here we should get our first encirclement. Two tanks are in this pocket, so if we're able to get it, this will be a great boon to our cause. Very nice. And Moscow is only provinces away. And we've finally taken Moscow, but this has surprisingly been very difficult much more difficult than any of the other unification wars we've had to go through. I'd really like to encircle this. I think if we can get here and here, then that will start fixing this flank. It is surprisingly difficult. We just have to be smart and we can't battle plan anymore. That was not a good idea. Anyways, we've just been microing a bit, trying to slowly encircle them. They still have so many divisions that they can man their entire line, which is kind of annoying, so we can't really finish this yet. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are stronger than Germany. Germany currently is right now. I don't know what happens here. Maybe they get a lot of Germany's army or something and steal it and go over here. Okay, and we finally won. This means it's time to take a break for a little while. It's the 1970s now, and that means we have new models of tanks that we need to update to. And then once we finish that, I think we will be good to continue going into Europe and liberating things and helping France resolve its civil war, maybe. We'll have to see. But I think I have everything researched that I want to, to begin in updating our tanks. So we have now this advanced armored fighting vehicle model that we're producing and this advanced main battle tank, finally using some modern armaments. And we will research an advanced APC soon. We will start making those and then we'll get rid of all of our normal infantry and only rely on the mobile division. I might make a very, very fast APC model too and make a different division to do some encirclements with, but we'll see. I don't know if that'll be necessary. Anyway, we're now going to clean up Germany's rebellion for them. This may be a little counterintuitive, but to take St. Petersburg back, we have to be able to actually reach Germany, and if there's this buffer state, there's not much we can do to actually reach them. So we'll do this, and then we'll prepare for our war with the Reichsback, or the whatever it's called now. I have too clicked the button to disable nuclear arsenals, so we won't have to worry about the game just immediately ending, which I think is for the best. Once upon a time, you could exploit it, to capitulate countries really fast and not have the nukes fire, but that's impossible now, as far as I know. That was funny though, when that was a thing, but also very painful. Yeah, it might be a little bit late in the game, but I'm finally researching military police too. I kind of wish I researched these a long time ago, but better late than never. I just didn't realize that resistance would start at 75% because that nation, I guess, didn't have cores on anything. And like I said, I, I think I could declare and win but the problem is we take so much attrition by being in states that have that much resistance and then because we're missing so much anti-tank all of our divisions will just get overrun and you know, we'll have lots of problems. I guess we have a lot of these armored personnel carriers. Maybe we could use some of those instead. But we do have a lot of infantry equipment at least. That's good. I guess do we need to design a really crazy armored car? This, this doesn't look like an armored car. This looks like a mini tank. I don't know if making this really cool will make it suppression better. Better. Yeah, when I add armored cars here, they just have the same suppression as cavalry. Okay, I've come to the conclusion that designing armored cars probably doesn't make suppression better. It just uses less equipment and manpower. But I don't know if it's worth it still because we have so much manpower.
manpower, and armored cars might cost so much more to produce than infantry equipment, then making them to suppress areas is just not going to be worth it. So I'm just not going to make armored cars and I'm going to stop researching them. We're finally in the positive with anti-tank, and I think everything else, well besides main battle tank. I'm not too worried about that though, we really just need more infantry to hold the line. We already have so many tanks, we just need to keep making infantry equipment and infantry stuff. I don't know why I gave that guy infantry leader, he <laughs> leads tanks. Uh, anyways, it has now begun and our divisions are really bad here. I'm fighting those other countries and the other Russian warlords was very easy compared to this. Their divisions are actually good and more well supplied than I kind of thought they were. At least when we're one versus four, we can win. Or if they just have no divisions on their border, which also makes things easier. And if we can take out Romania fast too, that'll be nice because then we can move all these divisions over here. Just need to keep a close eye on things so our divisions don't start getting overrun. There's a very high chance of naval invasions too, potentially along this coast here in the Baltic. They also have a lot of mines, but if we attack fast enough, they won't have time to do those naval invasions and I won't have to defend myself. Things are going good. Slovakia was trying to snake to Moscow, but we stopped them, so that isn't going to be a problem. We're starting to get a little bit low on tanks and stuff, so I might delete all the tanks in Romania. Yeah, all these mobile divisions are getting deleted so their supplies can be used on the main fronts. And then these normal divisions can go here. This mobile division will also get deleted. You should probably deal with that too. I kind of didn't see this. I was aware of this because these guys are kind of on our side because they're at war with the same people. So they just got pushed back and then Iran is now attacking into us from where they used to be. They don't have enough divisions in their mainland though to have this be a serious threat. There's a lot of land they would have to take before they could capitulate us. And Germany has technically now capitulated. TNO isn't really designed for the majors to capitulate, so it doesn't really end the war. Someone else will just become a major. It'll only keep going on though until everybody's capitulated. It's not like we'll be stuck in war forever, I think. If that is the case, then this might go on for a very long time, but we'll eventually take every province and then that has to do something. I don't think Hoi 4 is designed to keep going at that point, but I, I don't know. And hey, there there it is, we've done it. They've capitulated victory, establishment of a European Union for the Romanovs. We now have the Grand Duchy of Europe as our puppet. Finally peace, the empire is very strong. We just have one thing left to do, a very important diplomatic mission to North America. And here, this was difficult, but a Romanov on the American throne. It has been almost 200 years since a Romanov sat on the American throne in Washington DC. However, today the Americans have agreed to honor their ancient pact with the dynasty. Vladimir III has arrived in the newly dubbed Romanov DC today to greet his new subjects and talk to his new Prime Minister Ronald Reagan as they prepare for the construction of a McDonald's in Moscow. The empire is finally complete. We have the Grand Duchy of Europe and the Grand Duchy of America and Romanov DC. The world is now safe. All of the great powers besides, I guess, Japan have been aligned. Not only uniting Russia, but uniting the world. But with that, I think we will end things off for the day. I will see you all next time. <laughs>